take us through one of the things I just said. I didn't know that the Department of Justice had a kleptocracy. Well, unit. It's, a, it's a great title for a unit, right? Yeah, exactly. You look great on a business card. So it's a complicated story, and Goldman is kind of in the middle of this story. And basically, and so is Tim Leisner. If you go back to kind of how this all started, is Goldman Sachs raised about six billion dollars for a Malaysian government-linked investment fund called 1MDB and Leisner was the banker on that deal. Now all those funds that Goldman raised then went into the fund that was controlled by Malaysia, also championed by the Malaysian Prime Minister. And the purpose Minister. was for development projects in Malaysia. Exactly. Right? Um, the fund. Raising the wheels, so to speak. Yes. No, no, no. It was, for, it was supposed to be for legitimate development. Right. For infrastructure, projects. electricity, uh, right. and things like that. Right. Now That's what right. happened is all that money went into the fund and there started being calls that that fund was being mismanaged, that it was becoming too heavily indebted, that um, mysterious funds were showing up in the Prime Minister's bank account. So there's multiple investigations, including with the Department of Justice, to kind of figure out what happened if any of the funds in the Malaysian 1MBD uh, were misappropriated or, you know, by Malaysian link politically. Now, purposes. why does the wait? Why does the Department of Justice in the United States of America care what happens to well, a sovereign in fund? Because, in as a I different recall, Kerry, correct me if I'm wrong. Some of this money showed up. We don't know if it's this money. A uh, lots of money showed up with really expensive apartments in New York City. I mean, um, off the charts. So because they're driving up real estate values in New York, it's important to the DOJ? Look, the Department of Justice has different ways that they can establish um, how they can get into these investigations. And one of those is if the money's moved through a U.S. bank account. Now, I can't confirm that for sure here, right. but it's probably very likely that the money moved through the U.S. And one other, one other aspect of the story, which is in, in your piece and, and was reported also when the bond deal originally happened, was that Goldman got ridiculously high fees on, on for doing this bond deal. I mean, what is it ridiculously was, high? Well, it's it's a it's a sovereign backed you know fund, so that it was basically a really considered really well, safe credit. So normally you'd have a pretty low fee on that. I think it was and, like and nine, that kind no, of fueled no, no, the but, fire but the in Malaysia in, on the, number the backlash. The report is five hundred and ninety three million dollars. Mm -hmm. It was about nine percent, I believe. Yeah. And at the time, and and even now, that's. Significantly higher than you usually see for those types of bond deals, and, and of and course, and now it's important we don't know that Goldman's done anything wrong. Absolutely. It's important to say that, and, and, and Mr. Leisner as well. Yeah. Right, and Mr. Leisner, right. that's right. And the explanation I think at the time was, well, we took a lot of risk doing this deal because they wanted to do it quickly, and you know, uh, you know, by doing it so quickly, Goldman was on the hook in case something went wrong, and that could be a legitimate explanation. But there were certainly a lot of questions raised at the time of the bond deal, and now the fact that. Right. Tim Leisner's actually. So let me and I get think the, the thing that triggered this actually was a default, right? They yeah, failed so, to make a bond payment. So this bond, and basically what you have is you have the prime minister's political opponent saying, "Hey, this fund is overly indebted. It's almost it's missing payments or possibly missing payments, and you're mismanaging this and you're mismanaging the economy." So his opponents actually went in and they said, "What's going on with this fund?" And that has triggered a you know kind of a global rollout of basically how is money moving in and out of this and as I said before Goldman is the conduit for this they they were the investment banker for those bonds but that doesn't really mean that Goldman had anything to do with the with the, the underlying issues that were facing. so let's here. talk about Leisner for a second mm -hmm. this guy uh, people have said he's been subpoenaed but he moved to Los Angeles to be married to Kimora Lee Simmons uh, formerly the wife of Russell Simmons actually married by his brother, Ref, Reverend Run. Um, so did he move there before or after these issues started uh, appearing? Oh, well, the, the investigation has been going on for some time, but he's left the bank, you know, basically stated for personal reasons and moved back to the U.S. And shortly after he moved back, he received the subpoena. And there that is, it. Well, that is what we're saying. <laughs> Fabulous <laughs> life. Story. Nice story. Our nice. own Carrie Geiger and Bloomberg executive editor, Christine Harper. Thank you. Thank you.